Now, the theme of this year's Singapore International Energy Week is creating our low-carbon energy future. The five-day event starts on Monday, and this year it will underline the importance of all energy stakeholders from governments, international organizations, and societies. And for more insight into the 13th edition of the event, we're joined by Dr. Tan Si Leng, a second minister for trade and industry. Now, Dr. Tan, a year ago, Singapore announced that it'll be developing four switches, that's natural gas, solar power, regional power grids, and low carbon energy options. Can you give us an update on, on the progress? Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, Steve. So indeed, the four switches, um, uh, solar, of course, the natural gas, which is our conventional um, um, power gen codes they're using. And then there is the low carbon alternatives um, and also tapping from the regional power grid. So happy to, to sort of um, share with everyone that um, indeed today, our plans in terms of the solar power um, as a form of energy is surging ahead. We are currently sort of uh, at about 0 0.4 gigawatt peak um, uh, tapping on solar power today. We intend to increase by 2035 fold to going up to 2 gigawatt peak um, at, 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 um, at maximum. And that's by 2030. What has happened is that um, all of the government agencies such as JTC, um, HDB, including even PUB, most of the, in fact, all the rooftops, we will put um, the solar cells. And on top of that, we are also exploring ways of putting it over the reservoir as well to tap into the sunlight um, and, and to tap into this solar energy. Now, one of the things about uh, solar energy tends to create a bit of fluctuations in terms of the power grid. So to that end, we have also explored energy storage systems where we can actually uh, take the solar power, store them into these uh, ESS um, to make sure that um, we can maintain that consistency in terms of uh, power supply into the grid itself at all times of the day. And um, just this month, we put the first uh, urban style uh, solution in terms of the energy storage system itself. So we are piloting it out. We want to study to understand how it will adapt in our very highly humid and a very highly urbanized uh, uh, city of, of Singapore itself. So these are the things that we are, we're doing. Of course, moving ahead, we are also going to look at uh, more energy, energy efficient uh, solutions. We'll be working with uh, academia, we'll be working with industry, um, and also the youth to see how we can continue to uh, make sure that we strike a very fine balance between uh, energy security, uh, competitive pricing, and also sustainability over the long haul. Uh, Dr. Tan, you, you, you mentioned just now about how you know, the public service is going to be working together with multiple stakeholders, right? You've got your academics, you've got industry, you've got youth, private sector among them as well. Uh, and that's all part of this plan to collaborate, right? So why is this idea of partnership and, and co-creation so important when it comes to sustainability? It, it has to be. In a small country like ours, land is always a, a very scarce and precious resource. So we need all hands on, on, on board to come and co-create an ecosystem that is sustainable over the longer haul. So to that end itself, because no one can monopolize the vast um, treasure trove of knowledge that's required. So when we go out, we work with uh, industry partners, we fund, we catalyze many of these uh, research and development projects in, in the form of innovation. We also encourage the youth to come up with uh, energy efficient solutions and together with the Institute of Higher Learnings, with um, the different uh, agencies, um, we actually train a new generation of people in making sure and in uh, making sure that we have a constant supply of talent in this particular field itself. So the government has also, in the last few years, put out something like close to 100 million in terms of research funding for grant calls to see how we can actually get the R&D started in terms of uh, more innovative solutions. I think you understand that um, given the scarcity of space that we have here, all of that research into energy storage systems from the power that we harness from solar, looking at low carbon alternatives, looking at even creating uh, a carbon trading market. Uh, in fact, uh, I think this evening we just heard that uh, Peru and Switzerland has signed under the Paris Agreement uh, this Carbon Trading Services Agreement. I think these are exciting times ahead that we can all explore. And hence, this co-creation is going to be vital and crucial for us as a country and as a nation. Yeah, and what would you say are some of the key challenges then that face the energy sector when it comes to 
pushing ahead on sustainability? I think today um, a lot of it is, is the fact that um, um, the bulk of the, the energy supply still comes from fossilised fuels. And of course that pivot, that transformation requires a, a fair amount of work of changing mindsets and um, coming up with new and more innovative solutions. As I've alluded to, by virtue of the limitations of our size, um, we find that it is not easy to put um, many of these photovoltaic cells, but to that end, we've also explored um, offshore floating platforms where we put these uh, uh, photovoltaic cells to extract and to, to harness the solar power. Um, then these have to be transmitted into energy storage systems so that we can address the fluctuations throughout the day in terms of the, the, the fluctuations in, in, in solar energy. Um, with that, obviously, we also need to create an ecosystem whereby um, we have um, engineers, we have um, people who are trained um, in terms of, of making sure that the entire uh, ecosystem from uh, funding uh, from analysts, from even uh, financial sort of project managers and so on, they're all in place to make sure that we can tap, we can uh, synergize together as, a, as an ecosystem. Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Tan, for speaking with us this evening. Dr. Tan Si Leng, Second Minister for Trade and Industry.